Hi, I'm Dr. Sherry Levin, your financial accounting professor. If you are in one of my classes, then you are probably looking for some information on vertical and horizontal analysis for financial statements, which you have copied and pasted from Edgar into Excel. And the reason I want you to copy and paste them is so that you can use these figures that have been pasted into Excel on subsequent sheets in the same spreadsheet where you're doing financial analysis. So we've taken those numbers, they're on other sheets, and now we're preparing the financial analysis. Right here we have the vertical analysis of a balance sheet. So in the vertical analysis, what you're doing is you're comparing all of the account balances to total assets. So we're comparing cash and cash equivalents, 788,072. Of course, everything is in thousands, which is noted up in the definition up here. So we're comparing the balance of cash to total assets. Then we will compare the balance of accounts receivable, net of receivables to total assets, and then inventories to total assets. So to do that, I created an equation. So for example, uh, if we look up in the cell here, we can see the formula, which is to go to cell B7, which is 788072, and divide by dollar sign B, dollar sign 18. So B18 is cell here, which is total assets. But notice that I used a dollar sign before the B and a dollar sign before the 18. That anchors the cell or the address so that when I, I can copy this particular uh, formula, which is right here, <laughs> B7 divided by dollar sign B dollar sign 18, I can copy that and then paste that down, moving down. Otherwise, I would be comparing uh, this line, or when I get to the second line, the second line to here. So in order to always jump back to the denominator of total assets, I have to use the dollar sign in front of the cell address. So it would be dollar sign B, dollar sign 18. So that's how I came up with this. And if you do this with a calculator, I basically just took 788072 and divided by 84, excuse me, 4, 843, 531. And you get the same answer. Now let's come down further. I just, uh, when you download the SEC 10K report for the balance sheet, it will be given two years. I just blacked out this first year because we're going to ignore it in the vertical analysis. In a vertical analysis, you're looking at the same year. So that's why I blocked it out. Now coming down further, we can see that we are going to be in an error message. So this error message is coming because in this cell B26, there's the dash. And the dash represents a zero, but Excel doesn't really know what to do with dashes. So if we just change that dash to a zero, then it will be able to compute our ratio, which is still 0% because we're comparing 0, a numerator, divided by any denominator. Of course, the denominator is total assets, but it doesn't really matter. 0 divided by anything is still going to be 0. So that will just explain to you why or what you have to do if you have a dash. Okay, coming down further. Now, this is an error that will only occur if you have copied and pasted it from an SEC 10K into Excel. When it copies, I'm not sure why this happens, but it puts an extra space after every number. I've corrected all the numbers up to this point, but I wanted to show this to you so that you will know how to do that. So here's the number when I copied and pasted. it. Notice after the nine, there's a little space there. So if you back up or delete that space and then hit enter, then the error message goes away and you end up with a percentage. So total current liabilities is 29.3% of total assets. Okay, I believe that's the only error. Yes, that's the only error here. Okay, so that is a vertical analysis of a balance sheet. Again, the most important thing to remember is that every account balance is going to be divided by total assets in order to come up with the percentage that it represents of total assets. Okay, and then of course, when you add these up, this all has to come up to 100%, and the same thing at the bottom, you'll also come up to 100% for liabilities and equities. All right, so now we've done a vertical analysis of the balance sheet. Hopefully that's clear. Let's move on to the income statement. 
So for the income statement, when you download an SEC 10K, it will give you three years of data for the income statement. So I've just blocked out here year zero and year one because we don't need that for the vertical. Remember, the vertical analysis is looking at one year only. And so I think I have this stated up here. It compares all account balances, which will be the numerator, to net sales. And that will give you a figure. And in this case, it comes out to um, 50, well, we're cost of goods sold here. So cost of goods sold, I took two, um, actually it's billion again, because it's in thousands, but let's just leave the last three zeros off and say that we have two comma 796 comma 599. And we divided that by net sales and that gives us 53.1. So in other words, cost of goods sold is 53.1% of net sales. Therefore, the gross margin has to be well, there's two ways to figure it out. One way to figure it out is to take 100% and subtract out cost of goods sold because that would be the answer of gross, uh, gross margin or gross profit. The other way to figure it out is to do the same thing, which is to take 2, 470533 and divide it by net sales. And that will also give you the same percentage. Notice that gross profit or gross margin plus cost of goods sold always has to equal 100%. So that's the little hint there. Okay, so let's coming down. Um, I just copied the formula. We should have the same. Notice we have the same dollar sign in our formula that sort of locks us down or anchors, I think is the word that most people use it, anchors net sales as the denominator. So the formula doesn't move. Okay, so where are we? Let's come down to here. We see that we have restructuring and impairment charges. Again, the dash represents the number zero, so we could change that dash and put in a zero, and we will end up, um, it should give us 0% over here. Um, it did not, but zero divided by anything is going to be zero. So the answer here is a zero. Somehow it's stuck on its dash. So I'd have to go in and do a little more manipulation, but I don't think I need to do that for the purpose of this video. Okay, coming down further. Now we have some interesting things happening. We have net, or we have, we're on the income statement. We have net sales, and now we're looking at our general and administrative expenses, and then we have um, restructure and impairment charges, then we have income from operations. It's 236,770. Now we're going to be pulling out some of the non-operating expenses. And interest is considered a non-operating expense. So we have um, a negative interest expense. First, that sh sh should raise a little red flag for you because interest expense on an income statement typically is not a negative number. So then you might question, well, what does it mean when interest expense is negative? So it means that this company, this corporation, um, has decided to net together interest income with interest expense. And the net result is a negative figure, meaning that they paid more interest, ex interest expense or more interest on their debt than they earned as interest income. So that's how it comes out to be a negative number. It isn't meaningful to find out what percentage this negative number is of net sales because interest expense as a percentage of net sales, that would be of interest. But when they've netted, when they have netted income, interest income, and interest expense, that percentage doesn't mean anything. It's kind of mushing too many things together, to use my technical language. So I would not do that at all. Same thing here. It, I, I guess I must have copied the formula there, but I would also put not applicable because it's other expense net, meaning we don't even we'd have. To, I guess we could go into the financial disclosure notes and maybe find out exactly what is included in that account. But from a vertical analysis perspective, it's not very useful um, when it's negative number as a percentage of net sales. Okay, and coming down at the very bottom, same thing. Let's see what other errors do we have here. Okay, so we talked about that one. This is, oh, this is another error where there's an extra space. So see at the end of 209842, there's that extra space. If you back it out, it will give you a percentage. So now we have that income uh, before income taxes is 3.98% of net sales. So like 4%, 4% 4 
we're getting down to a very low uh, bottom line here, aren't we? So let's actually jump to the, well, let me see what this error is. We did that. Um, this is all about the extra space. Both of these are telling you about the extra space. And here's another extra space. So I'll back that one up. And you can see that we end up with 1.33. Um, income lost from equity method investment. So this is where the, um, the investment account is being valued in a way that the unreal or the loss has to be recognized in income. So that number, again, it's negative. I'm going to say that we do not want to have a percentage difference with uh, net sales here. It's just not a meaningful number. Okay, so now we have net income is 92,139, 92, three more zeros. And it's 1.75% of net sales. That's a very low not figure, I would imagine. So this would be an interesting company to compare to the industry average. This, these are real SEC 10K reports, but I just changed the company name so that it wasn't obvious which company it was. Okay, so that is it for the vertical analysis. And I will prepare another video for the horizontal analysis just to make the video shorter so that they will load faster on your computer. So thanks for listening.